It is a kind of time machine tucked away in an avocado grove. A place where daring men in flying machines still wear flying caps and goggles. A sleepy place where time slows, yawns, then stands still. You could call it a field of dreams. Out beyond the housing developments, the strip malls and the traffic, just before the cattails of the Everglades, a tiny airport has somehow evaded the real estate developers. A place called Richard's Field, after its founder, veteran pilot, Captain Richard Neubauer. Almost 30 years ago, Neubauer, a World War II fighter ace trained by the Royal Air Force, carved an airstrip out of a South Dade avocado farm. He invited his fellow pilots to fly in, and Richard's Field was born. Here, on roughly 40 acres, this tiny airstrip is home to some of the nation's most unique aircraft, a living museum where every day the displays and the curators climb into the afternoon sun. Okay, make it hot. Contact. Roll back these hangar doors, and you'll find aircraft predating the Second World War in perfect flying condition lovingly restored by their owners, meticulously maintained. Planes dating from the early 40s that look as though they've just rolled out of their factories. In the still summer air, antiques lift themselves up and over avocado groves and into a watercolor sky. The cockpits are open, the airspeed judged by the wind, the altitude eyeballed by the pilot. The pilots have become a kind of co-op, an association of sorts, that have bought sections of property and deemed it an airport in perpetuity. We get down to the aileron, we make sure it moves freely. One of the flight instructors on the field is Robert Mixon, a purist tail dragger pilot with thousands of hours in the air and a passion for what he calls seat of the pants flying. Richards Field is very special. In fact, it's one of the only grass fields left in South Dade County. It's an excellent training base for people that really want to return back to yesteryear and, and tail dragger skills, stick and rudder skills, and be a better pilot, basically. Mostly, Richards Field is a place where pilots can still fly the old-fashioned way. And again, we're flying without any power. Right. Airplanes not falling out of the sky. This is how you train pilots for emergencies as well, right? Exactly. It's called stick and rudder flying. It's holding it off with the stick. The way the barnstormers flew before airplanes became computers that could land themselves. For Mixon, it is also a return to a zen-like experience of flying. We're going to check the interior first. We're going to make sure that... A meditation and a spiritual quest, he hopes, like zen, will make him one with his airplane. That's exactly it. You're at one with one. You're at one with the airplane. You're at one with the environment, and it just works. It's like the perfect. It's like the perfect uh, swing in baseball. All set. All set. The stick and rudder skills basically are keeping the airplane where you want it to go and controlling the airplane by being a part of the airplane instead of plugging in numbers and plugging in performance data to make it work. Okay. You ready? You ready? Okay. Like the barnstormers, Mixon teaches emergency procedures and just plain old aerobatics. Loops, spins, and rolls. Just for the pure fun of it. You can feel the aircraft when it's going too fast. You can feel it when it's going too slow. You can actually uh, look visually for your approach and control your approach like every landing is an emergency now. In a sprawling Miami day, Richard's Field is a place where time has slowed, then stood still, where if you squint, it could be 1935. So at least for now, 
Richard's Field remains a place caught someplace between yesterday and today. A place where, with a little imagination, if you squint just right, you can travel back to a simpler time, to a field of dreams.